This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. We got a customer complaint that their restrooms are hot, but then they also say some of the dining room's kind of warm. So I have a feeling we're gonna have an issue with this AC right here. Uh, it's pretty warm out and it's not running at the moment. So we're gonna open it up and start checking power. All right, um, got some more clarification. What I did was uh, the unit wasn't running when I came up here. So I called their energy management company and had them put all the units on test and full call for cooling. This unit comes on beautifully all the units it's not hot in the dining room at all it's not hot in the bar it's not hot in their kitchen area everything's working this unit uh, went ahead and checked the TDs we've got 20 degree TDs all the way across the belts tight everything seems fine so that leads me to their restroom exhaust fan so we're gonna dive into that right now so these restroom exhausts never underestimate all the dried up poop particles so uh, be cautious and wear gloves when you're cleaning those screens. But look at this thing. It's all full of poop particles. Um, motor's not hot. Let's get the meter out and test for voltage, see why it's not running. It should be running. All right, this is the uh, speed controller for this guy. And uh, it doesn't appear to have power in here. Maybe, maybe there's power. Um, but I'm, I don't ever just rely on non-contact voltage testing. Um, we're gonna go ahead and pull these wire nuts and test power to ground and see what's going on and if it's a you know breaker problem or what, so. All right, so I uh, got my meter right here. Uh, this is the Fieldpiece SC480. It's been my go-to meter for a while now. Um, and it, you know, I know that you can get super scientific meters and stuff, but this works perfect for everything that I do to each their own, right? So we've got power right here. I pulled out the speed controller. We've got no voltage here, three volts. So no voltage and I checked both legs to ground. So our next step is to go downstairs and try to find a breaker, something that controls the power to this. But I isolated the motor, that way we only have the power in those wire nuts. And then if the breaker's tripped, I can turn it on and come and troubleshoot the rest of the unit. Well, Things have escalated pretty quickly and I'm currently climbing in the attic. So here's the deal. I have no power on the roof. The, the labeled breaker for exhaust fan number five, who knows if it's correct, but the labeled breaker is on and I can't see anything. Now I will say that right over here, where you see all these conduits right here, that is a lighting panel. And in the past, I have noticed that a lot of times the restroom exhaust will be controlled in the lighting panels of the restaurant. Usually they set them up to when the lights are on, the restroom exhaust fan is on. That lighting panel has been bypassed and they've installed a whole new setup. So we might have a problem there. It may have been off for a very long time. It's hard to say, but the first step is to get over, find the conduit on the other end. The fan is right there in the middle of the screen. It's on the other end of that and trace the conduit down and see where it's going. That's the step that we're at at this point. All right, I climbed over there. It's on the other side of this. This is our roof access, so it's way over there. But I started climbing over there and then realized that wasn't the best place. So I got up over here in their dishwasher area and I could see the conduit. And I realized, I marked it with this towel. It's this conduit right here. And it seems to be going down into here. Now, this is not the area of the breaker. The breaker is like four panels over. So maybe there's some controls in here. We'll have to open it up and see. All right, get the panel opened up and it says right there EF5 and that's correct because I have a white, a blue and a green wire going up there. And if we come into here, it's like we've got some maybe lighting contactors, but then down here, there's a time clock. Time clock says exhaust fan five circuit 35 and that's accurate. So let's open this guy up. I think they've just got a time clock that's out of time. 12.43. It's been a while since I've done one of these. Okay. And power should be on now. Question is, does that keep time? We'll have to put a marker mark on it and then uh, follow up and see if it's you know got the right time next time we come back or something so uh, it looks like it's set up to turn off from 
what is that? 9 p.m., which seems kind of early, to be honest with you, till 6 a.m. We need that thing shutting off at like midnight because they have customers in the building till midnight at least. All right, I ended up wiring the speed controller back in. Um, the wire nuts weren't making a good connection, so I went and grabbed some Wagos. They seem to be holding a little bit better. Just gotta make sure you get them in there properly. But so far, so good. So we're gonna push this back in, go turn the breaker on, and see if this guy runs. And if that's the case, then we'll clean the poop screen. All right, power's turned back on. And it's running. So, what we're gonna do is uh, turn it back off and we'll try to pull this screen out if I can. We'll look at the shape of the fan. These fans are pretty much throwaway fans, so if it's really gummed up like on the wheel and stuff, I'll just order them a new fan. But uh, let me pull that screen off. Dinner. Oh, yummy. Restroom exhaust fans are nasty. I'd rather clean grease off of an exhaust fan than dried up poop dust. All right, well, I'm gonna finish this up and then uh, we'll investigate the rest of the fan. All right, didn't really see anything else wrong with the fan. Um, it's not very dirty on the inside. It was really all on the screen. So we're allowed to run 4.9 amps and we're running 2.9. So don't see anything wrong with that. So I have it set for as high as it'll go, high speed. The moment you start uh, lowering these things down, they start to mess with the motors. Like when I slow it down, watch that current, it just keeps climbing and climbing and climbing. Sometimes you gotta watch out. Um, it just depends on the fan and how much of a load it has on it. These things can really kill the motors if you don't pay attention to the current. So this one looks like even on the lowest speed, it's not slowing it down too low, but still. Turn it back up, watch that current drop. Um, I never liked these style of speed controllers. In all honesty, when I install most fans, I take them out. But regardless, we'll just uh, put this one back together and go check on the restroom, see if the ventilation is better in there. But I don't see any problems with the AC. So, as far as the uh, time clock goes, I give it a chance. It's possible that you know it's just way out of whack because of power outages or something. So I'll set it and then tell the customer to keep an eye on it. If we have to change it, we can come back another day, but I like to give it a chance. Last but not least, I went in and took my paint marker, wrote restroom exhaust fan number five, and then also bright yellow writing, time clock and lighting panel. That way the next guy doesn't have to go climbing in the attic like me, right? When it comes to these service calls, okay, talking with management is really important getting information from them now i mentioned in the video that when i got there they were complaining about their restroom that was their main complaint okay but in talking with the manager i started quizzing him after he said yeah the restroom's hot and i said have you had any problems with the dining rooms my initial thought on that call was that it was going to be an ac issue okay so that's why i was like well if it's an ac issue they would be complaining about a hot dining room so when I asked the manager, like, hey, have you been having any problems with the dining room AC? And he's like, well, you know, in a few areas, it's a little warm. But I think I led him to that one. It wasn't necessarily like the AC was down. And it also didn't make sense because when he explained it to me, he's like, yeah, there's a few tables that are a little warm. And it's like, no, in my head, I'm thinking it wouldn't be a few tables. It would be the whole dining room. They only have three ACs for that building. Again, understanding how these buildings operate is a very, very a good benefit, right? And it helps me because I can think of that building and I'm like, okay, if the restrooms are hot, more than likely it's controlled off of their dining room AC. That's just how it works in that particular restaurant. Sometimes it's a kitchen, sometimes it's a bar, right? So having an understanding of the operation of the building is important, okay? So I think when I mentioned in the video that he said, eh, you know, it's a little warm in the dining room, I was quickly turned off of the ACs by when I called the energy management company and I just said, hey, put all systems on full call for cooling. I'll call you when I'm done. And then I went through all their ACs and I'm like, okay, these ACs, I didn't see need to go digging into them, putting gauges on and things like that. I just did an initial triage kind of a thing, check the ACs out. And I'm like, they all came on and they're all kicking butt. Now, simply checking a temperature differential across, across the supply air and the return air does not tell you if the unit is working properly 20 degree td does not necessarily mean it's good 
what happens if that particular building has undersized ductwork and it typically when operating properly runs a high TD like 28, 29 degrees. Okay. So just because I saw 20 doesn't mean that's right. And also another thing to understand too, is your, your evaporator TD or your, your Delta T, I guess we should call it right. The difference between the return and the supply air temperature, um, is not always going to be 20 degrees depending on the indoor conditions and the humidity in the air. It could be 17 degrees. It could be 25 degrees, okay? It's really nice to have software. There is things you can do to calculate what your target delta T is, okay? Um, Fieldpiece has a target exit evaporator temperature built into the, some of their old uh, psychrometers. And then um, uh, measure quick. Uh, the software will tell you your expected targets based off of your indoor conditions. So there's a lot of different ways you can do it. Um, but just understand that simply because it has a 20 degree TD does not mean it's working properly. Okay. But in my situation, I felt comfortable saying, Hey, all these ACs are working good. Okay. So I quickly stopped with that. I probably spent 25 minutes just turning on all the systems, just observing, listening, checking everything. And I'm like, Hey, I don't see anything here. And if it was an AC, I would expect them to have massive complaints about, comfort in the whole dining room or something. And so I'm like, eh, you know, I saw all the stages come on and it's like, yeah. So I kind of got off that one and then said, okay, if it's not an AC, what else could cause the restroom to be hot? And you have to really start thinking. Um, they have weather stripping around their door in their restroom. Okay. When the door shuts, it almost creates a seal. Okay. There's a little bit of airflow in the undercut, but not a lot. There's, there's barely any. Okay. So in the undercut of the door, the opening under the door, okay? So there's weather stripping all around the tops and the sides of the door. So it almost creates an airtight seal when the door shuts in the restroom. With that being said, there's supply air vents in the restroom from the AC. So the air vents are pushing the air into the restroom, but there is no return air vents in the restroom, which that wouldn't be a smart thing to do anyways, right? You don't want to put return air vents leading to an AC in the restroom. What happens if someone goes and takes a, just a colossal, you know, bathroom break and it smells horrible? You don't want that being sucked up into the AC, okay? So oftentimes in the restroom, they'll use exhaust fans, okay? So the exhaust fan is the path for that air to exit the restroom, okay? So think about it, if the exhaust fan's not running, you're dumping in air into that restroom, but it has nowhere to go. At some point, it's gonna cool down, but then at some point, that air's not gonna have anywhere to go anymore, and it's gonna get trapped, okay? And it's actually gonna create a positive air pressure in the restroom, and we need somewhere for that air to exit so that way we can transfer heat, right? You can dump in cold air all you want, but if you don't have that warm air exiting the restroom, you're not gonna have an effective heat transfer, okay? So with that being said, the exhaust fan wasn't working, so I went through the process and found what was going on, okay? Now, restroom exhaust fans, I, I think, you know, this video was basic. It was short, it was simple, but I think that there's some value in troubleshooting, right? And understanding. Once you know what's going on, hey, I didn't know what breaker was controlling that exhaust fan. I didn't know there was a time clock, but okay, let's break it down. What's the, again, I use dumb logic, okay? And I know, I, maybe it's just my way, but I call it dumb logic, okay? All right. I need to find out what's controlling the power for that exhaust fan. And my thing is, okay, I don't want to chase every breaker. I don't want to start flipping every breaker. Like that just seems silly. Okay. So, and I looked inside the labeling for the exhaust fans, uh, where the breaker panels are, and it just says exhaust fan. It doesn't say which one. And oftentimes those can be incorrect. So I thought let's, let's use my dumb logic. Let's go climb in the attic and let's find the exhaust fan. That's easy. I can find an exhaust fan in the attic because I can see the penetration coming down. I know where it was and just look for the conduit going to it and then trace the conduit back. It wasn't that hard. So I started climbing in the attic and it's like, hey, you know what? I don't think this is the smartest way to do this. I think I can approach it from another angle. So I went to another spot in the kitchen that had a better vantage point, popped a ceiling tile, didn't have to climb up there at all. I just popped it up, stuck my head up and said, there's the exhaust fan. There's the conduit. And then I followed that conduit to the breaker panel. And like you guys saw, I was a little confused because, okay, I see a breaker labeled exhaust fan five, which I think that's it. And it's on, but it's not in the panel that the conduit was going to Hmm. open it up, investigate carefully. Okay. Investigate. And boom, there we are. 
time clock, okay? So I set the time on the time clock, turned it on, went up to the roof, fan started running, okay, good sign. So now it's time to clean the bird screen or the poop screen, right? And uh, rinse all that stuff off and get some air moving through that thing. And our problem was solved, okay? So yes, it was simple. Yes, I could have just walked up. If I knew right where the time clock was, okay, cool. I could walk up, twist the time clock. I could have been out of there in 10 minutes. But I didn't, you know, I, I was familiar with the restaurant, but I didn't know exactly where the time clock was. So you see my troubleshooting and the logic that I used to find it. Then once I found it, again, I was just talking with someone, another technician on the phone right now because he's out troubleshooting an exhaust fan issue. Ironically, at that same restaurant. Now, this was filmed, I don't know, a month ago. And I have another technician, my on-call technician, um, and he's working on an exhaust fan system because all their hoods aren't working. And, uh, you know, I was walking him through some things and he had motor starters that were tripped. And what I was explaining to him was the same thing with this. When you have a motor starter tripped, when you have a breaker tripped, you don't want to reset it when you still have a load on that breaker, typically, okay? Especially if you don't know what potentially caused it to trip, okay? Um, in our case, it was a time clock. But still, I didn't want to turn the time clock on and have a load on it because I wanted to be up on the roof to see it turn on, to see if there was any problems. So in the case of my other technician that's doing a service call right now, I told him, what you do is you go up to the roof and you shut off all the exhaust fans at the emergency switches, right? They should all have emergency switches and, and whatever the load may be, you, you shut it off, okay? Then you go downstairs and you restore power. So that way you can come back upstairs and turn it on and, and visibly see and hear and have your meter and your test instruments up on the roof to tell you what's wrong. Because if you have a direct short on the roof, right? And, uh, and I know I'm kind of going off on a tangent, but I think this is a great learning point. If you have a direct short on the roof at a exhaust fan motor, right? But what happens if it's just intermittent? It only happens every once in a while. So you reset the breaker and the breaker trips again. And you're like, okay, now I got to go find the short. So you go upstairs and you're just staring, you're looking, you're, you're doing things. Now, of course, before you reset things, you always want to test and preferably you don't want to reset a breaker if it has a direct short, but if it's intermittent, what do you do? You know, so you shut the equipment off on the roof, you go downstairs, you reset it, you come back up, you test for direct shorts to ground, you don't see anything, then one, two, three, please don't blow up, you turn it on. And forbid that it does short when you're up there, at least you're up there and you have an idea where it came from. Because sometimes it could just be in a conduit and being downstairs, you can't hear the pop in the conduit or you can't see these things happening, okay? So again, slow down step back, use what I call dumb logic and just trace the conduit like I did, you know, go through everything. Now in my situation, um, it ended up being a time clock. And then after I found it, I went and I talked with the manager and I said, Hey, you guys had any power outages lately? And he's like, yeah, actually we did. We had one for like seven hours the other day. Hey, that particular time clock that was on there does not have a battery backup. It does not have the ability to maintain its setting when the power is shut off to the building. So it's possible that it's just a matter of setting the time on the time clock. Now, also, I have since been back to that location a couple days after I set the time on that time clock, and it was still maintaining the proper time. So I felt comfortable. And I don't necessarily just want to throw parts at it and say, oh, the time clock had the wrong time. You need a new one. Well, that's not necessarily the truth. Sometimes I like to give it a shot and see if it still maintains time. Okay? So it was a pretty basic video. It was a time clock that was off. But we still look at the big picture. We still take our time, right? Remember, look at the big picture, give the customer a big picture quote if possible. They don't always have to accept the big picture quote, but you did your due diligence. You went through everything. You checked it thoroughly. You made sure it was working properly. The customer can choose how they want to repair it. That's fine but at least you're covering your butt, okay? I really appreciate you making it to the end of the video. Thank you so much. Hey, stay tuned. We got a cool series that's kind of brewing right now where we're gonna be replacing the air conditioner at my house. I'm excited about it. It's super fun. We're going as much as I can. We're gonna go all building science on it, okay? Um, it's kind of fun. I've got some cool tools coming and different things, so it should be a cool series, so stay tuned. I really appreciate you. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to my channel. Uh, consider checking out my website, hvacrvideos.com. we got some merchandise, t-shirts, hats, that kind of stuff, beanies, sweaters for the fall coming up. Um, 
It's a great way to help support the channel if you're interested in doing so. We are getting kind of low on the hats, but I have put another order in production. Uh, it's probably going to take a month or so to get the order, so there's a possibility. Again, it's kind of hard for me to gauge how many of these hats you guys are going to buy, but uh, you guys are killing it right now. And uh, I think we probably only have 15 hats left on the large extra larges, and I'm seeing those things go pretty quick. So if you want one, pick it up. If not, they'll be back in stock soon, and I'll let you guys know, okay? Uh, there's a few other ways to help support the channel if you're interested in doing so. PayPal, Patreon, YouTube channel memberships. There's links in the show notes of the video. Check it out. And uh, yeah, that's it. I appreciate y'all. Be kind to one another, and uh, we will catch you on the next one, okay?